Right, hello everyone. Um, my name is Morrison Zulu. I'm a medical doctor by profession. Um, I work here in Zambia with uh, Goodson Silabwe, uh, whom I think most of you out there know and probably have related uh, with him for a while now. So we together have been uh, helping the local church, of course, through uh, the ministry uh, that uh, Goodson is heading, which is called the Lord's Care uh, Discipleship uh, Ministry. So through that, we, we do help, you know, um, the people in the community uh, through the education, uh, agriculture, uh, as well as discipleship, you know, pillars, uh, where, you know, through your support, that you have continuously given uh, to the ministry. We, you know, we provide, you know, the various support um, to the people on the ground. So we just want to thank you most sincerely uh, for the help, for the support that you've continuously rendered uh, to Goodson, to the teachers in the community schools, as well as just to the general welfare of the ministry in here in Zambia. So we pass our most sincere gratitude uh, to you out there and we pray for God's continued blessings uh, on you so that you could also continue to extend that hand of support uh, to the ministry here. God bless you and thank you. I am Reverend Goodson Silavwe from Solwezi, northwest of Zambia. I work as a missionary from within Zambia and uh, my work in the Lord's Care Discipleship Training Ministries is fourfold. That is discipleship training as a minister, education as a second, agriculture third, and health the fourth. In all these, this is where we center our activities and mission. In the discipleship training, our task is to reach out to the people that have never heard the gospel before. In Northwestern, we have a tribal of Kaonde, which is believed to have been hunter-gatherer and they do shifting cultivation each and every year. In that area, they do stay in one place for almost a year and later on go to another. And therefore, they don't have access to education. They don't have access to the Word of God because they are always moving around and about. So, 40 kilometers east of Solwezi, we decided to plant a church and a community school in response to the situation which was catastrophic at that time. The school has enrolled 75 pupils and a church growth of about 43. We support the community there in health as well by partnering with the government and the Minister of Health that have given us the medical health kit and have trained three health community workers who support the people in preventing disease burden, especially malaria, diarrhea, bilirubin that have been very rife. In health, we were given 100 mosquito nets in February, which we have distributed to families which are living in the area. In terms of agriculture, we have also partnered with the Ministry of Agriculture that supplies us with 
inputs under what is the program called FISIP, Farmer Input Support Program. They give us 29 packs, while in the last year we were given 39 packs, which we have distributed to the people around the area so that they can be food secure and can grow something sufficient for consumption and also sell the surplus so that they can send their children to school. This in turn is helping the people to be in one place for a longer time as opposed to how they lived in the previous years because now they are being accustomed to stay in one place and take care of other things. We have also been given empowerment programs in terms of livestock management, keeping village chicken. And uh, these are doing very well in our area because people can even sell when they are ready and then they can have a little bit of money though not sufficient. Because of high poverty levels in the area, many pupils have no desire to continue with the education, especially when they reach grade seven. Because to them, education is not so much valued. They feel after grade seven, they can do something else, even if it is within the village setups. I am happy to be in Solwezi, and I've learned quite a number of things on how ministry runs. In 2016, we ordained a young pastor who I'm mentoring so that he can take over from me because age and tide can wait, not wait for no man. <laughs> and this is the reason as to why I am imparting quite a number of skills and knowledge in this young man so that he can continue to support the way even after I have retired, which is not very far from now because it's only two, three years from now. It is my humble appreciation and thankfulness that I have partnered with Sasobek Fontaine Congregation, which has been so instrumental since 1997 in my life and in my family and for the sake of the glory of God. Thank you very much, Danki.